What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today I'm going to bring to you my spirit born Tarzan build guide. Lord of the jungle. Because what we are doing is some shenanigans between a jaguar, an eagle and a gorilla build. So I've been lucky enough to get early access to the Vessel of Hatred DLC, so there'll be no spoilers here in this video. Uh, this build guide doesn't currently involve the Day 1 patch, but what I love about this build, it is really going to help you to carry from Pet 1 all the way through you know, to Pet 50 to 70. So from all of my testing, uh, one of my favourite abilities to use has been Quill Volley. Now, for those that don't know what Quill Volley is, it's an Eagle skill and it's a Core skill. And what happens with uh, Quill Volley is, if you get the rebounding aspect, it can shoot out multiple feathers that bounce back towards you, doing a really good amount of damage and with a really fast attack speed. So, what we want to be doing is, when we're looking at our Spirit Hall, rather than just running the Eagle straight build that we did for leveling, uh, you want to have your Gorilla as your primary spirit hole choice because every time you're casting a gorilla skill you are staying in barrier right now we're using the jacinth shell as you can see here so we are a kind of a low life build but the barrier is what keeps us alive and then our jaguar for our secondary spirit hole um, which helps us to get stacks of ferocity which increase our attack speed but also with the ebba whacker helmet it now means all of our gorilla skills are jaguar skills all of our Jaguar skills are also Gorilla skills, so we get the benefits from both. And our Quill Volley is all of the above. It's an Eagle skill. It's a Jaguar skill. It is also a Gorilla skill, which is um, really, really nice to have. So uh, I'll take you guys through um, a little bit of the planner, but I just wanted to show you some uh, footage here of just kind of how this playstyle works. So you kind of want to charge in there with the Ultimate, uh, the Hunter which is a Jaguar ultimate, um, if it has, it has a chance to reset all the time, which is very nice to have. Um, once you use Ravager, that gives you an increase in damage, and that's what means every time you use your core skill, like Quilvoy, you kind of just port around. This build kind of feels like a mixture of playing Shred, if you're a Druid, along with Barrage, if you're a Rogue, because of the way that Quilvoy works, and kind of like a bone spear necro because they rebound back to you so if you like fast movement you like rotating skills and, and different elements uh, this is a really really fun play style i definitely think you should check it out um, if you enjoy the content please subscribe to the channel it really helps me continue doing these guides for you um, the build guide will be in the description so feel free to check it out but i definitely think that quill volley um, is going to be the meta build this season for the Vessel of Hatred launch. So guys, let's get into it. Taking a look at our gear. For a helmet, we are using the Ebiwaka helmet. This is a really crucial piece of gear that's going to help with our damage. So... According to your secondary spirit hole choice, your skills are all additionally Jaguar, Eagle, Gorilla, or Centipede. Ours are now going to be Jaguar because we are running Gorilla as our primary and Jaguar as our secondary. So, our Gorilla as our primary uh, increases our thorns to enemies you hit and grants a barrier for 5% of your max life. Well, because of that, all skills are now also Gorilla skills. So for all our Jaguar skills, they are also a Gorilla Jaguar. Same as our Eagle skill, our, our Quill Volley. That is now a Gorilla skill, which means we're constantly getting a barrier every time we file Quill Volley, which is what, how we have so much survivability. Now, our secondary spirit, maximum ferocity is increased by one. <clears throat> you get a stack of ferocity when you kill an enemy or damage a boss. Well, because of the Ebi Whacker, all of our skills are also Jaguar skills, and that's how we turn our Quill Volley into a Jaguar skill, and all of our Gorilla skills into a Jaguar skill. Now, uh, the most important thing about Ebi Whacker is what gives us so much damage. If you get a max roll aspect on this, you can get 30% damage per spirit type. 
That means our Quill Volley gets Eagle skill damage, Jaguar skill damage, Gorilla skill damage, and can do 90% increased damage, which is absolutely awesome. So I use the Jakinth Shell uh, while I'm leveling early game. If you get a Tyrael's Might, you want to chuck on Tyrael's. Resistance in Torment 4 is like really rough. And a lot of people are going to struggle with how to get to armor cap and balancing your resistance cap. So, Jakinth Shell is good because just the cooldown reduction is insane. Like, looking at that early gameplay, you could see how fast I was blasting Ravager, how fast I was blasting Scourge, how fast I was blasting the Hunter, my ultimate cooldowns. My cooldowns were almost perma-off because of how fast I can attack uh, thanks to my skills with Quill Volley and because of the Jakinth Shell. Now... This will kill you, right? If you don't have um, enough resistance or enough armor, you are going to just get one shot because most of the time your health will be down. So you kind of want to pop your armored hide running into a mob uh, to make sure you're unstoppable, to get your barrier up, or even a couple of your basic skills just to fire up your barrier a little bit more before entering a fight. Uh, that is where you are vulnerable, when you are traversing map from one mob to the next mob and you can't continue chaining damage like you can in the pit or like you can in the Helltide. For my gloves, you'll see this, right? Not even tempered. In the early access, iron chunks have been really horrible. It should be patched and much better for life, but it has been so expensive for us to test, which means I haven't been able to test every piece of gear that I want and I had to change my gloves to this one because I needed resistance. So, we put... Max life, crit chance. Crit chance, I think, is going to be really important. Um, if I had Tyrael's, I probably wouldn't need the cold resistance, and I would go ranks to core skill, uh, I think would be best in slot. Um, I have it in my build planner. But yeah, um, if you don't have uh, the redirected force, which gives us crit damage based on your block chance, Conceited is a very good option, because we are constantly in the barrier, and you constantly get damage from Conceited. So... Redirected Force or Conceited are both very good in slot here. I was going to test going back to Conceited, and I don't have the iron to do so. For our pants, you can go Juggernauts. Uh, if you don't have Juggernauts, uh, put on Disobedience. Anything for armor. Armor is really important, and we get damage based off of our armor scaling. Uh, Dex, Max Life, Armor is really good to have. Um, lightning Resistance. For this, like, mid to end game torment, until you get Tyrael's, you kind of need, like, cold resistance gloves, lightning resistance on pants, fire resistance on boots. Uh, I even put a poison resistance on my animal, which killed me because I didn't have a passive for extra damage. But I've kind of felt like I really needed that resistance scaling. Because in Torment 4, the negative penalty is absolutely huge. So, any armor type on your pants best in slot for the boots uh, Archon Greaves Binding Morris Binding Morris is amazing because close enemies or those we deal indirect damage to which is a lot uh, are slowed now we get a lot of increased damage to slow you know up to 20% uh, multiplicative and with our mercenaries our mercenaries are going to be um, amazing to help us get more slowed effect uh, as well as some increased survivability. So I'll post that a little bit later in the video of our mercenaries and our choices. But the binding mass works very well with our mercenary skills. Rebounding ritual. I love a good ritual. Rebounding is amazing. You want it on the two hand. If you're still leveling or earlier game trying to push to this. Uh, and you get it on your amulet. That is still great to have. Feel free to rotate um, your amulet, your gloves, and your quarter staff, your pole arm, whatever you've got. I've gone for the block chance just because I was uh, using redirected force and I thought, oh, nice quarter staff, a little bit of extra block chance. We like that for the extra crit. But Quill Volley's feathers explode at their apex, they return to where they cast, dealing up to 98% of their normal damage. Uh, it, it's best used on a two hand, it's where you're going to get the most value out of that aspect. And you would want something like this, I think, like Dexterity, Max Life, Crit Damage would be best in slot. I didn't have enough Iron Chunks to test using this pole arm. So with this build, I don't even have my Tempers. Uh, this isn't even, even Max Tempered. I didn't even get the right Temper because I would 
ideally want Quill Volley Feathers have a chance to do double damage or cast twice. I'm pretty sure it's double damage now. That it would be your best in slot temper uh, and what you want. And uh, better affixes. Ancestral, of course, for the increased damage to dexterity, life, and crit damage would be amazing. Uh, in the build description, I have what I think would be best in slot from, from tempers and everything. So feel free to check that one out. Uh, amulet. Amulet, I've got... Um, casting a gorilla skill increases your weapon damage by up to 40% of your armor. Um, that is going to be amazing for our push into leveling. Uh, especially that armor cap is in the 900s now, or pretty much or 1,000. So you want to be getting to 1,000 armor. It's very tough in a T4 uh, without running Disobedience and um, a Tyrael's Might. I had to take off one of my gems in my ring because i needed shadow resistance like a shadow would sniff at me and i, I kind of felt the pinch so we changed that around but ideally in your um rings and amulets you want to be running skull gems so you get that armor that armor is very nice to have and then once we reach paragon 300 we're going to get a lot more resistance that's kind of going to balance out quite nicely in our build but um, looking at our ring, I did get lucky on, like, my, my third or fourth boss. I got a ring of Starla, so I chucked that on. Otherwise, you could put on any ring that you really want. Um, anything from damage conceded would be kind of good if you are running redirected force, or if you want to change out your basic and run saw, you could do that and then have the aspect that reduces your mobility skill, so you can use saw and either get vulnerable or unstoppable. Probably unstoppable would be best. But the Ring of the Midnight Sun. Now, this is a awesome, right? This is pretty much our regen skill. But it also gives us a massive amount of damage. So, the stats on it are great. Dex, crit damage, cooldown reduction. Uh, two to Mirage is okay. But when you critically strike, you regen 50% of the vigor you've spent in the last two seconds. Which means Cool Volley itself, as a core skill, is just increasing our vigor. Unbelievably awesome to have. But what I love is gain counterattacks passive effect. Um, I'll go through this in the skills of why this is important. But as soon as you get enemies that are close to you, a flat 30% of your crit damage. And that's including your multipliers. So whatever your crit damage is at, if you're at 1,000%, you get a few close enemies, 1,300% crit damage. So it scales unbelievably well. We have to put a few points into it, but we don't actually need to equip it on our skills, which is wonderful to have. Okay, well, let's have a look at the skill tree to see what we're running and why. So, initially, we are going to go our first couple points into Thunder Spike and Enhanced Thunder Spike just to progress to the next tree. I do use it, like, if I'm running between mobs and I have zero life because of the Jakin's shell, I will just cast a few Thunder Spikes just to stack up my barrier to make sure that I'm kind of tanking going into the next fight. Uh, we don't need to pick up a passive for it. Um... Five points into Quill Volley. It's a main source of damage. Uh, it is an Eagle, Jaguar, and Gorilla skill. Uh, we want to make Quill Volley strikes vulnerable. It's how we apply our vulnerable without using exploit. And Quill Volley's hell out. And that's what makes them spread out into a barrage style. And then our rebounding aspect is what brings it back in. Uh, we go three points here. Casting a core skill increases your vigor generation. It's kind of nice for leveling. Uh, going into the next tree, uh, we have... One point into uh, dodge chance during evade. Uh, when you dodge, you get crit chance. Three points into uh, unrestrained. And unrestrained will be a really nice passive to get on an amulet. If you don't get unrestrained as your passive, because you get 12% uh, multiplicative damage to unstoppable, stack it up to three, that's 24%. That's really nice damage to have. Uh, you can probably go three into potent or three into acceleration so those are the passives are the ones i'd be looking for on an amulet now we do run ravager and ravager is amazing because you get 40 percent damage um strike over the next six seconds and with ravager um it regens all your vigor and um it just allows you with cool voice to like teleport through to enemies so you just hold down your core screen and just like bang 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 just like shred it's absolutely phenomenal uh, this is a little different on the live server. There is one point to um, like a, a weapon mastery thing before you get the vulnerable. 
Um, I still got two points here, so we might have a little look at the end of where we are going to allocate them. All right, over here we're gonna pick up uh, armored hide. I have put four points into it because it gives me more unstoppable for a longer period of time. Each point you put in, it's like one second, then two second, or three second, or four seconds. So I think it's about four seconds on live, which is really nice to have because we are using unrestrained. We get that extra damage. So not only is it useful in an emergency scenario, it's just nice to have. It gives us our barrier, being a gorilla skill, and then it makes us unstoppable, which is super nice for crowd control. Uh, we go through to um, the next one, but then it gives us block reduction. Block reduction is really nice to have, especially with the aspects we had a little look at before. Uh, I'm actually going to chuck an extra point into a stack of DR for Resolve. Resolve is wonderful to have. If you don't have an Ebby Whacker, there is an aspect you can put on for your helmet that increases your stacks of Resolve, which is very, very good to run. Uh, we go three here for the block chance into Patient Guard. Um, it gives us DR uh, until we move, which is nice. And then... I do use these three points into barrier. You may not need it, but if I've got no life and no barrier, I'm a little concerned. So, And the only time I have no life and no barrier is when I'm not fighting. So it's just nice to have a passive source of barrier. Through pits and high-level combat, you're not going to get as much value out of it. But if you're helping a friend level or you're doing open-world content... Very good to have to make sure that you're in a perma barrier when you're running around counterattack. So, people ask, why are you running counterattack? You're not using that on your skill bar. Well, because of the Ring of the Midnight Sun, we gain counterattacks passive. So, what's counterattacks passive? Gain 10% dodge chance and automatically retaliate against close enemies for 80% damage when you dodge your attacks. Tested this, I've run into the open world, an enemy attacks me. And what you will see is you will do a little bit of damage back. The damage is like garbage. Like, it, it is pathetic. It's not really doing much. But what is awesome is reinforced counterattack. Counterattack passively increases your critical strike damage by 6% for every close enemy up to 30%. For example, in that pit, we just, as soon as we go in there, we've got enough close enemies. It's 30%, and it doesn't seem... It's not an additive 30%. It is just 30% of your flat crit damage, which is absolutely insane. I saw it, I was like, oh, what have I got? Like, 500% crit damage? Oh, that's not very good. And then I ran into an enemy, and I'm like, whoa, 780% crit damage. That's pretty nice to have. So you do want this only for a passive effect. You don't want to actually use the skill counterattack. It is a waste of a skill. I've tried with Scourge, and I've tried without Scourge. Uh, with the low life build, we don't have any form of healing. Uh, we can obviously pop a few potions here and there, but it does nothing once your, your, your barrier is down and you've casted all your cooldowns, so you're passively losing health. Scourge will kind of counteract that. It, it's pretty lovely to have. Um, so you want to go through just one point here and there, and then lucky hit, enemy affected by Scourge, gives you life steal. Um, it, it's pretty pretty yum to have. It feels bad using points into a poison resistance, but for T4, you desperately need it. So we're whacking three points into any venom for the poison resistance because um, we can at least hit poison resistance gap. And you all know you hate that feeling of once you've got that poison dot, you see no life on your globe. You're like, uh-oh, you know we're going to be in trouble here. Yep, any venom will solve that little problem for you. Okay, having a look, uh, we go three points into Resilient. That's what I was saving a point for. Uh, we do want the increase of life for 10 seconds after casting a Gorilla skill. All of our Jaguar skills are Gorilla skills. And our barrier goes off of our maximum life. So getting a 15% increase in max life is very nice to have for our survivability. Uh, Eagle skill damage increases your movement speed. It is very yummy to have. But what is amazing is... A, a, this skill here, it's not right on the D4 builds right now, by the way, but whenever you dodge, you get 10% increased multiplicative damage with eagle skills. Now, that stacks 
three times, up to 30%. So you can get 30% more duplicative damage every time you dodge. So on your boots, you want attacks, reduce, dodges, evade, cooldown, which means every now and then you can chuck in a little cheeky dodge. You can get 30% more duplicative damage with your quill volley. It stacks very well. Okay, we want a little bit of Jaguar passive because of our Epiwaka helmet. Most of our skills are Jaguar skills. So hitting enemies with Jag skills increase the damage they take from you by 0.3% up to 30%. Well, everything we're hitting for, all of those cool volleys that you see before that are like spamming multiple enemies means that you can get potent up almost permanently. So I would love, love an amulet with like potent and ranks to unrestrained uh on the live server i will be looking for an amulet like that i think that would be the most damage you can get and furnace so jag skills you'll increase crit strike damage per stack of ferocity so crit damage is wonderful so we do use the hunter uh we we do run an ultimate for previous build we ran eagle um but we want to use the hunter uh, because uh, it does a lot of good damage in an AoE. One, it looks pretty. Who doesn't like a good-looking Jaguar out there? They can be like, oh, he's a good boy. Look at the damage he does. He roars like a Jaguar and sounds awesome. He makes you feel like Tarzan. The Hunter is cool. It is fun. And um, it has a chance to like rapidly reset all the time. And what is cool is... Why we use an ultimate is we can get increased damage to elites, 15%, uh, which is awesome, because elites can be super tanky, especially if they're in a barrier. I uh, hope the barrier is a little bit better on live launch of Vessel of Hatred compared to the early access, because it's kind of been disgusting, but should be fixed now. Um, you increase your vigor, it doesn't really matter. Supremacy is awesome, right? You get stacks increasing your damage, and when the ultimate skill ends, you get five stacks. So we can cast the Hunter all the time, which means we can keep stacks up of Supremacy and increase our damage. And what I really, really love is it's another way to get unstoppable. Casting an ultimate skill makes you unstoppable for six seconds. Currently, without a uh, Jack Int Shell, we can almost instantly repeat that cooldown all the time, which means we've got so much unstoppable. And having so much unstoppable with Armored Hide and with our wonderful ultimate, the Hunter, means we can almost, not quite, but almost get permanent 12% increased damage. Which is why I would love to make that 24% with a good amulet. Alright. Let's go look at our mercenaries, shall we? So I like to run with Rahir. He is kind of cool, and some of his abilities really help with our build. So taking a look at Rahir and some of his skills, uh, he's got Valiance. So if you be damaged for at least 15% of your current life, he comes to your aid to negate the damage. He knocks down close enemies for two seconds and grants you unstoppable. I don't really like the knockdown, but... It is what it is, right? It's still less damage taken, which is really nice to have. What I do love is the ground slam. Um, it does damage, and in the center of the slam, enemies are slowed. It works amazing with our aspect on our boots, because we get 20% increased damage to enemies that are slowed. So anything using slow for our mercenaries is really awesome and synergizes well with the build. Um, on this side, for Ground Slam compared to Shield Charge, Shield Charge has armor, which is okay, but we really need the resistance to all elements. Like, it is so crucial going into T4 without uh, the Tyrael's might. So we need that resistance. Uh, we go through to Bastion. Um, it's kind of cool. It takes a protective position, like a little barrier. It takes 90% of the damage, so you can kind of be in there and be safe if you're ever in the old day and kind of moment where you lost a lot of life but it gives us unstoppable it's one second we don't really get too much value out of unstoppable for one second but it's nice to also have if you are randomly crowd controlled but what is cool is inspiration enemies affected by his ground slam take 15 percent increased damage that is awesome but allies affected by uh Rahir's bastion deal 
25% increased damage. Either way, we've got a form of survivability, uh, protection, um, resistance, but damage at the same time. So, our next guy, Oldkin. We love little Oldkin. Um, this is not meant to be either. Whoops. Uh, we kind of want it on Quill Volley so that he's doing stuff all the time. Oh, I might have actually changed that for a purpose. I did. Okay. So, we want to run Field of Languish. Uh, Alkan uh, desiccates an area for 6 seconds, slowing enemies within by 40% and reducing their damage dealt by 20%. The reason now I remember that I changed this from Quill Volley, because when I had Quill Volley, he would just do it every 20 seconds, right? And it would sometimes leave him behind in the past. But I found if I ever cast Armored Hide, I was in a bit of that old oh, dang kind of moment where I was like, all right, I'll save one up my sleeve if I ever get crowd controlled or I think I'm, you know, a little risk of dying. I'll pop an Armored Hide and little old kid, he comes to the rescue. He desiccates an area. He slows them down, reduces their damage dealt. You're like, hey, safety. So um, he's super cool to have. Um, he's my favorite. I wish I could run little old kid around with me everywhere, but uh, we do love our Rahir. He is awesome. He's part, I won't say it. Enjoy the quest. Uh, enjoy the campaign until you get your mercenary, but love this guy. Paragon. For our starter board, we're going to kind of go up right side. I do fill in these little max life ones and armor a little later when you can. If you're struggling with survivability, go into it. Uh, we're going to go Menagerist. Menagerist is awesome because dealing damage with Gorilla, Jaguar, Eagle, and Centipede skills increases your damage by 4% for the next 10 seconds. Now, we've got all skills applied on our hotbar. Which means we are constantly getting that damage buff, which is very nice to have. Um, into our second board, we're going to go the Vicious Shield. Uh, up the right side uh, to Talon, which is increasing our damage with Eagle Skills. And Eagle Skills get an increase to Crit Strike Damage, which is kind of nice to have. Uh, we don't really need the Legendary Bonus, but... Yeah, it, it's kind of cool. Um, you can follow the build guide. I won't go too in depth. Uh, you get 1% increased damage for each 3% of your max life you have as a barrier. We are a barrier build. That is awesome to have. We want that legendary node. For the second board, um, well, third board technically, we're going to go up. We grab turf. Turf gives us damage to close targets. We get DR to close enemies. 10% DR is very nice to have, especially for high pit clears. All the way through to the legendary node when you cast Gorilla, Jaguar, Eagle, or Centipede skills with the same spirit in a road. Restore, Vigor, and deal 30% increased damage. All of our skills are Jaguar, Gorilla skills anyway, so that is up almost permanently. Well, we want to run into uh, in fighter with spirit. Uh, spirit's kind of cool because we've got increased crit strike damage, and crit strikes increase the damage an enemy takes for you up to fifteen percent. So super cool. Um, the legendary bonus in this glyph is nice. You get damage to elites, so that's super cool. Definitely want to get that one level up to level forty-five. And for our final board, we are going to go with. Da, 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 da. Drive and Hone. Hone is awesome. Um, you might actually want to put Hone earlier if you're not this high up. Because the damage with the Jag skills and the crit chance is really nice. We crit a lot more. And most of our skills are Jaguar skills. So that is amazing. But if you've liked what you've seen today thank you so much i would appreciate if you can hit that subscribe button it really helps we're pushing for the youtube partner status we're close we can get there um come see me live on twitch if you got questions around this build ask me i'm available i stream thursdays saturdays um i keep bringing out content each season um for people like yourself that are new I i've been super honored to be able to play spirit born and have early access so i can share this information with you all the stay tuned because i will be showing just the boss fight of unlocking torment 3 
so you can see how you can do this build with an easy setup. No tempering, no ancestral gear, barely leveled glyphs. Um, you're easy, able to push and grind further. So have a little look and I'll see you all in the next one.